How'd you like it? No good. There's no effect. Oh. Hello, fellow heroes. I'm Action Smack Jam, the two in one hero made up of a virus from the 70s and a guy who likes to watch things. And the weekend is upon us. So let's not dwell too much on back to school matters. I mean, you can always continue that on Monday. But it is Friday, and Friday means Ultraman Blazar! This one's supposed to be a two, multi-part, definitely more than one part episode. And when it comes to Ultraman, those can possibly be the best. So let's get in. Oh, cute girl with popsicles. Do you want one? What are you reading? I of the Kaiju. How do you pronounce his name? Kazunori Yokomine. I was a student of his. Never been more jealous. Well, he's pretty eccentric. We both enjoy fishing, though. So we wound up getting along strangely well. <laughs> I bet you enjoy fishing, Gento. Oh my gosh. Is he okay? I hope he did his stretches before this. My ankle would be finished. I found it. I thought he was about to puke for a second. What you doing? Oh, nice bracelets. Um, ooh. Ah, is it a good idea? It doesn't sound like it feels good, dude. Oh, was he fishing? Is that how he likes fishing? Oh, it's a happy rainbow. You know, you can listen to this opening already on Spotify. I dropped it in one of my playlists recently. Hey, popsicle? Man, popsicles for everyone. And look at this guy with the guns out. It's no longer a secret. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Yeah, hang on, don't push yourself though. Especially not in this heat. Uh, Captain Gento. Hmm? Emmy just sent you something. Ooh, something from Emmy. Rainbow? Yeah, she is a busy girl. Upside down rainbow. Those are said to be harbingers of rain. Do you think this could be a kaiju thing? Is it monsters? Is it black ghost? Catch anything good? Not so far, hero ma. I almost expected him not to answer. Wow, I have never seen such a frowny the smile. Last time we did this. That was impressive. The GGF? Seven years ago now. You're moving up in the world, I take it. I don't know about that. Does it look like it? A little bit. Although the heat could be getting to me. <laughs> you researched a kaiju that had something to do with rainbows. So you're really here for another lecture. Hmm. He's so excited. Begin. An upside down rainbow. Lord Nijigagachi will bring us rain. Oh gosh. If you have any evil hidden within your heart, disaster will strike. That didn't make me feel better, Grandma. That's what Nijigagachi is. So is it a kaiju or not? Or maybe a god. <gasps> but no one dares to believe in them nowadays. The pinnacle of hubris. Oh. What is that? Kaiju has been sighted near Mount Fuji. We'll fish another time. Man, such a complex smile. Though that day may never come. Oh gosh. Ooh, man, those explosions. I mean, they mean nothing because, man, this thing is not even budging. Guided missiles have no effect on it. Great. How about punching? You should never rule out punching. <laughs> How'd you like it? No good. There's no effect. Oh. Ooh, it's Kirby-ing. Cool. Is it just rain? But is this a blessing or a curse? Uh, could just be rain. I mean, clearly it caused it, but you know, it's rain. <laughs> that does remind me that I got caught in a flash flood this week. That that jank went up to my knees, like above my knees, like to my thighs. I was like kind of scared that it might get like to my phone if I kept my phone in my pocket. But what was cool about that is that I had my Action Smack Chan backpack. And my Action Smack Chan backpack is so high quality that it kept rain that was flooding an entire city from getting inside my bag. And you can get yourself an Action Smack Chan backpack from our very own Action Smack Chan merch store. Link in the description, of course. <laughs> Check it out. Ichigagachi rapidly decreased the air pressure. Ichigagachi. More like Ichigagacha. What's this rainbow about? 
seven colors rained from the sky and reduced the land to ashes. Oh, were they beams and not rainbows? They're actually shooting things? What do you think Kaiju are exactly? Large. Monsters to eliminate? If they begin to threaten our daily lives, then yes, I do. Oh, is the professor going to become large too? Humanity once lived peacefully alongside Kaiju in harmony with nature. Then humans came to abhor the Kaiju and began to exterminate them for foolish reasons. The world fell swiftly out of balance. Niji Kagachi will return the world to that balance. Uh... But if humanity is part of nature, then whether good or bad, what we do is all part of the balance. What You're... arrogant thinking. So typically human. Well, I am one. Humans could have chosen to walk the right path, but they didn't. And they're never going to. Are we gonna fight? Oh, that thing left a mark. Ooh, it looks like snake. Professor, did you summon it? I'm sorry to say. This lecture is one of the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> oh. Gento, you good? You good? Nobody was ready for the Mega Buster. How long have you been charging that? Do whatever you have to do, but I won't let you stop me. See, that's the words of somebody needing a body slam. Oh, with the rain. Seven typhoons? Much worse than you even know. <laughs> oh, jeez. We have to stop this thing now, or it's all over. Gosh, you know it's a problem when Gento's this worked up. Here we go. Ah, we had the real pilot on today. Nothing against Yasunobu, but man, just whenever he's piloting Earth Gear, it's just not exactly like the way Henri does it. Oh, well, Yasunobu didn't get slapped like this earlier, though. Ooh, we're going right with mouth cannons. Go! <laughs> oh, with the fiery eyes. Were they burning before or after it got shot? So it's more of a summoning thing and not as much of a I'm a man that gets a large sort of thing. He's not like Ultraman Ginga. He can't turn into a kaiju. Oh, what is this? Did it just cast off? Is it about to clock up? Ah. Uh, that? It's changing. It was getting warm. Oh, is it about to shoot the rainbow beams? That sounds dangerous. Oh! Ooh, Earth Gamer. Was Andre trying to run? <laughs> Ron, Henri, you had to fight better than this. I was talking you up earlier. Oh, shoot. Is Henri asleep? Cool. I love the combos. Doesn't seem like we're getting very far. Yeah, that's right. If you keep attacking the same spot, you'll soften it up. Might have to start pulling out some of the uh, energy moves. Explosion tail whip. Or maybe it was more of a property damage tail whip. All right, what are we hitting with? What are you gonna hit him with? Just going with the throwing. No fancy stuff. Oh. You know, Blaze Army might have to start using actual beams. Like the spear is cool, but we might need some beams, man. I'm getting another heat reading. Oh shoot. Oh. Oh, he unblazard. I think. Is Gento okay? Is he down there? Just leave? Oh, at least he's alive. Oh, <laughs> that was intense. I didn't even know where to stop it. I don't know. I don't know what to think. <laughs> at least Gento's okay. Like, I wasn't sure what this episode was going to be about. Like, maybe it was going to focus on Gento. I do like, we do have a character that would be centered around Gento with his, um, with his old professor. I'm taking the antagonist role in this episode. Or ra rather, maybe I should call it this arc. <laughs> I do like how you can see uh, how much reverence Gento does have for this particular professor. Like, from what they tell you, uh, they definitely spent some, like, quality time, you know, as people who both like fishing. But, you know, he's also studying that same professor's book. And then like uh, the part that especially grabbed me that wasn't wasn't necessarily written, but came through in the performance was the anticipation, <laughs> the eager anticipation to hear a story from this professor when Gento was first talking to him uh, while they while they were fishing that first time. <laughs> That's the part that grabbed me. That was the part where if uh, 
if this professor happened to be, you know, the antagonist for this arc, that would be kind of heartbreaking for Gento. <laughs> that would be conflicting for Gento. So um, I really like how all of those elements came together in, you know, building this antagonist and uh, building the antagonist's relationship with Gento. And then there was something kind of profound about sharing the perspective of what kaiju are. Are they just monsters to be defeated? And of course, uh, Gento giving the pretty straight-laced answer uh, that an Ultraman would, you know, usually give. All the Ultramen I can think of would probably give a similar answer in that um, if they disrupt the peace, man. <laughs> if, they, if they disrupt the peace, we had to put them down. But that does, uh, that does make you kind of think back at the episodes so far in that we had to put all of them down for the most part. <laughs> Um, I think the only one that was not like put down, put down was the one from Henri's episode where I think that one just technically went back to sleep. We just kind of shoved it to a side and let it be a mountain. <laughs> just please go to sleep. <laughs> so that was probably the most uh, peaceful answer. <laughs> but that was, um, that is kind of like the issue I have uh, with what I've seen of like the past couple Ultraman seasons. I actually haven't finished Decker, so I don't, um, so I can't really speak for all of it. But like when I was watching Ultraman Trigger, while I do think it is a pretty good show, it did, it did kind of bother me though, how many of the Kaiju just had to be destroyed. There was much less of a focus on, um, you know, just preserving life whenever they can. It was, it had to be put down, you had to, I had to go destroy all the monsters, including, you know, some of the ones I didn't want to see get put down. The attractive ones. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> isn't, I'm not supposed to be talking about Ultraman Trigger. Or attractive giant ladies. Um, the, the true grab right now is in the uh, professor and the antagonist. You know, the thing that really grabbed me about him was that really complex smile it's frowning but you kind of get the sense that it, it, that it's supposed to be a smile you know what i mean it's like it's very contradictory i guess it's supposed to be pretty similar to the to the symbol of that upside down rainbow thing <laughs> because you know we usually attribute rainbows to you know happy stuff smiley stuff and yet um Although we attribute a rainbow to happy smileys, <laughs> uh, good times after the rain is gone. It does, it is, um, it is arched like a frown. <laughs> just very similarly contradictory as the professor's smile. But then they took that rainbow and they were all like, well, these upside down rainbows. <laughs> Um, these upside down rainbows, which look like a smile, and yet it could be a symbol of something not good if there is uh, some sort of impurity in your heart. <laughs> so then it becomes a foreboding thing, you know? <laughs> and again, it's like a very contradictory, complex looking symbol. <laughs> and I think it is very deliberately, you know, reflected in the professor's complex smile but yeah um i'm super excited to see where this goes and because like well for one thing i've said it before um back in the Henri episode that i really like the folklore centric kaiju concepts and this seems along that same line the kaiju might even be considered a god which is you know also interesting because there's also that same theme just in the way people tend to view Ultraman in some other Ultraman series, where um, Ultraman can easily be revered as a god because of his grand size and the fact that he comes in right when we need him and saves the people and has just powers, just powers upon powers beyond belief. <laughs> Uh, that was a large thing in Ultraman Tika, if I remember correctly. <laughs> and of course, I'm pretty sure it was in other other Ultraman shows. I just can't think of it at the top of my head. 
So it's an interesting theme to see that um, instead being projected onto a kaiju. But yeah, um, in the comments tell me what you think about this arc of Ultraman Blazar. What are your hopes, your anticipations for the part two if you haven't seen it already? If you had fun along with us, go ahead and give this video a like and share with a friend so that they too can become a fellow hero. Also, if you haven't noticed, we do stream Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, both on YouTube and on Twitch. I'm over there playing games, hanging out with the chat, just generally having a pretty good time. I hope that you could join us sometime. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give that subscribe button in action smack. So that it is easier to keep up with everything that we're rolling out. And again, thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you in the next Smack Time Pact adventure.